Hey folks, it's Mangrel. We're finally retiring the iFlight DC5 and we're using this as our mainframe. This is the Rotor Riot HD1. We've built it in a slammed configuration, 20 millimeters only. Ignore this wire, this is for a future video. All right, let's do it. All right, let's start with a very quick unboxing. So here we have all of the 3D printed parts. Next, we've got our uh, arms, and the arms also come with some foam uh, landing pads, which you know don't typically use. Then we have our top plate, bottom plate, screws, hardware. So everything seems to be packaged very well. Next, we have oh some stickers. So that's nice. The Rotor Riot gives us a couple of stickers here as well. And, and this is something interesting because you typically don't find these uh, included with frames, but we have some plastic motor skids and we have also a decent battery pad. Next, we've got uh, battery straps, two of them. And the battery straps are really nice. They have this silicone sticky part to them. And yeah, you probably notice that we have definitely more than four arms here but uh, this is because I ordered extra arms. And the arms are really nice. They're very thick, nice finish. They're not beveled, but the, the edges are also not sharp. And you can see that they have no flex. Once you've got your packaging opened up, go ahead and organize all your parts. And you'll find that we've got three different uh, kinds of screws. We've got a short screw, a medium screw, and a long screw. And then we've got our standoffs, as well as all of our 3D printed parts. When it comes down to the antenna holder, this is the antenna holder that comes with the HD1 kit. And feedback seems to be that these uh, break very easily. So we can see that there is really no support down here. So it's got uh, this weak point. So there is a different design on Thingiverse that looks like this. So you can see that the bottom piece is a lot more beefy, a lot more strong. Next, you'll have to decide on how slammed you want your HD1 build to be. Here are the 30 millimeter standoffs that come with the kit. And these determine how close or how far apart your top deck and your bottom deck are. So if we have you know, 30 millimeters, probably something like that, you can go down to you know, 25 or even down to about 20. So you have to decide what size you want. So here is 30 millimeter standoffs. Here are 25 and here are 20. If you decide to use the 25 millimeter spacer, you're able to use the original DJI camera. You're able to use all the 3D printed parts. So this is the way to do it, um, you know, with, with the least amount of kind of effort and work. The only piece you have to modify is this spacer. So if you want, you can even cut it a little bit shorter, but this spacer goes underneath the antenna. And right now, the way that this is designed, it's 30 millimeters in height. So if you go with a 25, well, you gotta make this five millimeters smaller. If you go with the 20, you gotta make this 10 millimeters smaller. Now for our build, we're gonna go all in and we're gonna go with the 20 millimeter standoff. And really the 20 millimeter is the shortest you can go because of the stack height, because of the air unit height, all those pieces. But in order to go with 20 millimeters, you can no longer use the DJI camera. The DJI camera is just too tall. The camera, I believe, is 21 millimeters. And that's if it's not even an angle. If an angle becomes even taller. So you'd have to use the CADX uh, Nebula, Nebula Pro, one of those pure micro size cameras. You have to design and print different camera mount. So if we compare these camera mounts, this is the original camera mount and this is the slammed camera mount. So you can see quite a bit of size difference. And I've already gone ahead and remixed the Rotor Riot's design to these pieces here for the Nebula camera. So I'll go ahead and link you to Thingiverse where I've got these posted. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our base plate here and wanna make sure that these inserts have the lip facing up. So you wanna have it in this orientation. And you can see one side has two holes, one side has three holes, or I guess one, two, three, four holes. And the side with the four holes is the back, that's the front. 
So we want to lay it like this. And then we'll take our first arm and you want the tip that comes out like this pointing in the direction of travel. So imagine if it's going, it hits something, this is what protects your motor. So you want it to be always facing like that. So we'll just have to place it on here and line it up. And if you do put this in correctly, it just won't line up and you won't be able to screw it in. But we want to line up these two holes and then these two holes. Just place it on top for now. And then we'll take our X brace and then you want to line up the holes again. So you see that this is wrong because the holes don't line up. So it should be like that. So now the holes line up. And then we'll take our longest screw and then we'll get these started. So we're not tightening anything, we're not putting Loctite, we're just lining things up for now. And each arm gets two screws. Okay, so let's do the next arm. It's very similar. And what you'll find is they actually fit together. So they start to fit together like, like this. And that's what gives a lot of strength too. We'll put the next one in. So again, two screws, one, two. Okay, just loose. And then the back arms, we want them to be pointing backwards like this. But again, you could, you could tell, like, if anything's wrong, these holes won't match up. So I'll just slide it in there. Again, two screws. And then our last arm. It's all assembled. We have these pointing up. Next, let's go ahead and install whichever size standoff we chose. So we'll need one, two, three, four, five, six standoffs. And then for the standoffs, we'll be using the shortest screw. And once again, we'll put a little bit of Loctite on there. Next, let's go ahead and install our stack screws. So whether you're using a 20 by 20 or a 30 by 30, you'll decide on which holes to use. But these are the screws we're gonna use. The first thing we wanna do is make sure that they're not too tall. So we'll go ahead and just uh, temporarily fit them in there. And they just poke through these holes here. So let's put the first one in. And then we'll go ahead and put our nut on there. Okay, so we can already see we have an issue because our stack screws are going past our standoff, which means they're too high. So this uh, top plate will not fit. We'll need to either get shorter screws or if you don't have shorter screws, we'll just put some spacers. And that's what we're gonna do. We'll put some spacers underneath because we do have all the space here. So we'll put a little spacer. Our stack screws have been assembled. And now let's do a test fit of our ESC. This is our iFlight uh, Success 50 amp. And what the manual tells you to do is to mount it in this direction and have the power leads coming off the side. I prefer this direction instead. And I'll kind of explain to you why. First reason is when the power cables come out the front, you'll be able to mount your capacitor here as well, which gives you a lot more protection of your capacitor, as well as when the power leads come through this area here, you can actually zip tie those power leads to the standoff, which gives it some protection in case of your battery being ejected. If it's off the side, there's, no, there's nothing here, no protection. So if that battery ejects, it'll tug on these pads and it may separate the pads from the speed control. Now there is one issue with this though. We can see that our 
connection for the flight control is at the back, which means we need a quite a long wire to go from here and come out to the front. And some flight controllers don't come with such a long cable. Let's pause for one second because that's not entirely true. If you saw our Lumineer QAVS uh, mini build, we had the same challenge and what we did was we flipped our flight controller around and we modified our beta flight configuration to change the yaw degrees and we were able to resolve the short cable issue that way. Now thankfully our success controller here um, came with a longer cable but that's something that we had to solder on here. So you have to see how your setup is. And then the other reason, because I'm reusing these motors from the DC-5 build, and the DC-5 is a dead cat design, which means that the front arms are closer to the speed controller than the rear arms. That's why the wires are fairly short on the front motors. So if I have these pads on the inside there, it'll be a little bit too short to reach. And even right now, when I mount this, I have to come from the outside which is not the cleanest design, but that's what I have to do based on the length of these motor wires. And I don't want to go splicing the wires at this point in time. Next, we want to go ahead and install our camera mounts. And if you went with the 20 millimeter like we did, you want to use uh, the remix design that we did. So they're these little guys for the Nebula. So you want to install them like that. And then next piece, we want to go ahead and install our air unit. And our design here is going to be quite a bit different than what most folks have, because we do have our directly connected antenna. And if you missed our last video, I'll give you a link up here where you can see how we did that. But because they're directly soldered in, you have to spend a little bit more time doing this. And we have to take, again, the whole air unit apart and go through the whole process once more. But that's all put together and we've also remixed the antenna mount to use the true rc singularity antenna so they're a lot smaller also we've got our nebula pro camera here so we've wired that in again we've got another video on showing you how to change the camera cable so i'll give you a link again at the very top on how to do that the okay, first thing we want to do is just see how this all puts together so let's mock it up so i think this will come through here and then this will go on the top. Yeah, that looks good. Lots of space at the front for our wires, for our capacitor. Our stand-up heights are good. All right, let's go ahead and mount our air unit. And usually this is very easy to assemble because your antenna is not pre-mounted, you slide it over. But because our antenna is already mounted, we'll have to kind of stretch this over and under and then twist it all around and then we can get it in here. So it goes something like that. And you can see it's still a little bit loose and then you have an option. You can either put double sided tape underneath this to give it some more strength or when you print this piece, you can print this piece uh, with a 20 millimeter height, so resize it. This is, I think, 22 millimeters. You can make it 20 millimeters, so it's a lot tighter. So in the end, we went with the smaller one, the 20 millimeter one. It's uh, definitely a lot tighter, but I think it'll give it better support. And then these guys here are the 10 millimeter version that uh, we resized. So the original one is 20, you wanna resize it to 10. Okay, so now what we should do is we should start putting the motors in so we can solder up the motor wires. And one thing that I love about the HD1 kit here, even though it doesn't come with stack screws, it comes with the right size motor screw. So the medium size screw is for the motor. I'm actually thinking that we should maybe mount the camera upside down. As the camera tilts, the cable gets pulled a bit too much. And just in case if there's ever a crash, anything like that, we don't want there to be too much pressure on this cable. So if we flip it upside down, we end up getting some extra length of cable. 
And then we could always flip the image in the software. Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll put a zip tie around here. And then we'll put a zip tie around the capacitor as well. All right, moment of truth. Let's uh, try to power it up. All right, we're good. Let's connect the top plate. And then for the top plate, we have to use these small screws. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And it looks like having the battery in this position is what gives us the perfect uh, center of gravity. So when I lift up the quad from the center, we see it has just a little tiny bit of tilt forward. So think of it as this is this natural kind of forward direction. So that's how I set the center of gravity. So now we'll have to cut a battery pad for this. Now we've gone ahead and taped up all the motor wires. We have to make a couple of changes to our beta flight. So we'll launch our beta flight, we'll connect to our flight controller. And then here we'll make sure that the quad is moving in the right direction when we tilt left, right, forward, backwards. Now we'll go under our command line, and because we rotated our motor, we'll have to remap the motor pins. So first thing I like to do here is do a dump all. And this will give you every setting that your flight controller has. And at the very top, we'll be able to see the resources. And here we can see what our motors are mapped to. So this is motor one is mapped to C08. So now we can use this as our guide. And now look and see what motor number do you have in each slot. So right now we can see in the motor one slot, we actually have motor four. So what we gotta do is we gotta set each of these, first of all, to, to none. So motor one, none. Motor two, none. Motor three, none. Motor four, none. So we freed up all those pins. And then now that we've made note of what the new pin should be, these are the pin numbers. We'll copy this, we'll paste them in. So now it's set, we'll type in save. Okay, we'll reconnect. And then now is the time when you'll connect the battery You'll go through your regular motor tests, make sure direction is correct, make sure that the right motors are actually turning. So normally what you would do on any kind of quad build, we'll go ahead and do that. So if you spin up motor one, this is what should spin. If it doesn't, you've done the pin assignment incorrectly. Okay, folks, so here's how it looks. Came together really, really nicely. The only challenge we had was with the camera here. Even with the 20 millimeter height, uh, the camera is a very tight fit and you can see that it's nearly touching the top deck. So depending on your FPV angle, you may have some challenges, but for us running roughly 20 degrees, it seems to be okay. And this frame is about 750 grams all up weight ready to go. We did hardwire our GoPro, so this is actually about 705, 710. So a lot lighter, but let's take a quick look at a flight video, see how the maiden flight goes. Before we flip over to the GoPro footage, let's start with the goggle DVR. So you can see that there's a decent amount of propeller in view, along with a bit of the top deck in the upper corners, but it's flying very well for its maiden flight. We did modify the uh, beta flight setting on the pins just a little bit. I'll give you that information on the screen as well. But here we are now, we flipped over to the GoPro footage, and this is without image stabilization. So I want you to see how smoothly it flies and just how the general prop wash uh, handling and those kind of things are. Now bear in mind that it hasn't been fully tuned, this is just the first flight. We did a couple of test hovers 
just to make sure everything was okay. And through that test hover, we modified the pit sliders a little bit, but this is truly its first flight out uh, in the wild here. I know a lot of you rely on the motor noise to gauge how well a quad is performing. So I've left in the GoPro audio so you can use that to gauge how well this is working. <laughs> 